three is on finding limits using graphs and tables. So we're going to be spending a couple weeks talking about limits. Um, so this is kind of the first chapter of calculus. All right, so what a limit is, so I'm going to use layman's terms here. Are we ready? Dumbing it down. A limit is a y value that you get closer and closer to as you move your fingers towards a certain x value. Okay, so as I'm going towards like x equals 4, I could start on the right side of x equals 4, and I could start on the left side, so I could start at 5 and 3, and then I could go to 4 and a half and 3 and a half, and I'm getting closer and closer, I'm squeezing in towards 4, does that make sense? I want to know the y value that you get closer to. Okay, sometimes that y value isn't even there. It's getting closer and closer to like 3, but then at 3, maybe the y value has an open circle. Right, does that make sense? So it doesn't have to exist. There doesn't have to be a point there. Um, but our limit is the y value that we're getting closer and closer to. Okay? So looking at this picture, so I kind of have this little picture here to help us. I, I'm going to use some notation that's kind of new to you. So I could talk about like the limit as x goes to, let's say, 0. So as I take my fingers and I'm moving, along this curve closer and closer to the x value of 0. So here's where x is equal to 0, right? So as I move closer and closer to it from the right and the left, what y value do I get closer and closer to? 2. That is correct. That would be the limit. Okay, that point doesn't have to be there. It's an open circle there. But that's what we're getting closer and closer to. So what if I talked about like the limit as x, oops, as x goes to 2 for f of x? So as I trace along the curve, I'm getting closer and closer to 2. What y value am I getting closer and closer to? 1, exactly. This is exactly what a limit is. Now, later on in the lecture, we're going to be talking about right-hand and left-hand limits. So if I talk about the limit as x goes to, let's do 3. But then I have a funny symbol up here. It's like an exponent that's a plus. Okay, what do you think is the positive side of a graph, the left side or the right side? The right side, because the positive numbers are on the right side of a graph, right? So what that means is I, as I get closer and closer to this line, to 3, using only my right hand. So if I'm only using my right hand, I'm getting closer to 3. What y value am I getting closer and closer to? 1. That is correct. But what if I have the left side? What if I wrote something like the limit as x goes to 3, and then I have an exponent that looks like a negative sign? That doesn't mean negative 3. It means 3, like positive 3, from the left side. So Alexa's saying 0. Do we agree? Yes. As I go towards 3 from the left, it's getting closer to the y value of 0. You guys are going to be pros at this. Look at this. This whole lesson in like 2 seconds. So exciting. All right, but what do you think if I talked about the limit as x went to 3 in general then? It would be what? Uh, like in between them, maybe? It doesn't really go to anything, does it? The right side went to? 1, and the left side went to 0, so in this case we would write D-N-E. This stands for does not exist. Yes? Um, as you're approaching this line, you're tracing along the curve here, and you're tracing along the curve here. So one of them goes to a y value of 1, but one goes to a y value of 0. Yeah, Alexa? Um, you use like, so like you would say x goes to 4 from the right. It would be like an exponent that has a plus in it. Okay. Kind of weird. Mm -hmm. A minus. Uh-huh. Yep. Very strange stuff. Do you guys remember a famous movie where the answer in a math competition was, the limit does not exist? Yeah, it's for Mean Girls. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> it's like the easiest question ever. So it makes it sound like she's in this really like difficult competition. She's in the math club, you know. Oh my gosh, I have to remember my calculus. It's so hard. Here's the question. 1 over x, do you guys know what 1 over x looks like? Yeah. What's the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x? <laughs> 1 goes to infinity and 1 goes to negative infinity. They don't go to the same y value, so the limit does not exist. And that was a whole lot of thought that Lindsay Lohan had to put into that problem in that movie. So, I don't know. All right, so number one. So let's talk about why these things are true. So it says, suppose we have the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Can I plug in 2 into that function? No, why? 
because I have a denominator that would be zero then, right? So f of two is undefined right now. But it doesn't mean that the limit as x gets closer and closer to two doesn't exist. Maybe that exists. Okay, so we could have an open circle on a graph, but our limit as we get closer to it um, can go to a certain number. So it says, let's find the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 by making a table of values with x values getting closer and closer to 2 from the right and the left. So on our calculator, if I put in, so you can just kind of watch here, you can do it along with me. If I put in x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2, and I go to my table, some of you guys have tables where the numbers are already there. So in calculus, I kind of want you to be able to pick your own numbers because we want to try like 3.9, 3.999, or in this case, 1.9, 1.999. So what we do is we could do a second table set. You might already have this set like this. So do second window to get to table set. And um, you're going to go down to independent, and you want to select ask. So when you go to your table, it's going to be blank. So you can do t tables on a graphing calculator. So you can uh, pick random values for x. So let's think about what from the left and what the right means. So as we're getting closer to 2, 2 is where it's undefined, right? So if I'm coming from the left, I want to plug in 1. I want to plug in 1.5, 1.9, 1.9, right? So when I go to my table and I plug those numbers in, so 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.9, 1.99, 1.999, what am I getting closer and closer to for my y value? Four. We all see that. Do you guys see the pattern in these? It's always two more. So like I had three here, 3.5, 3.9, 3.99. I was always really obnoxious in high school. And I was like, oh, I can just find a limit. I'm just going to do a table. And I'm going to do one point. And I just was like, no, 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 no. But sometimes your calculator can't hold all of those. And then it just puts two in. So <coughs> you can only do a certain number of nines. Yeah, Ashley. So now do second and then table is under the graph button. So now let's say we plug in these other numbers. So now we're going from the right side. So I'm going to plug in 3, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01, and so on. <coughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. 2.5, 2.0. Are we still getting closer and closer to... Uh, to four, yeah. So you can do two point oh oh one, and it looks like four there, but really, if I arrow, well, actually, it rounded to four. So sometimes it will round up. So we're getting um, five point oh, four point five, four point one, four point oh one, four point oh oh one. So both of these are getting closer and closer to four. So what it says is it's clear that the limit is most likely 4. So it's like, well, why is that? So we were finding the limit as x went to 2 for x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. What do you guys notice about x squared minus 4 over x minus 2? Yeah, Nick? Yeah, you can simplify that, right? Can't we break that down? So I still write limit each time. I can factor into x plus 2 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2, and these go away. That was what was making it undefined. That's why I was getting 0 divided by 0 but when I plugged in 2 before. But now that those are gone, are we able to plug in 2? Can I plug in 2 to x plus 2 and get a number out? What number do I get out? 4. It's magic. So a lot of times these limit tricks are going to involve like factoring. So we can do factoring, or we can change our equation around um, by getting maybe common denominators and so on. Yeah. Um, so you did second table set, and then did you? Uh huh. <coughs> I don't know. That's weird. All right, I'll play around with it. Remind me at the end of class. All right. So number two. So this one. Oh, and it says why? Why is this? Why does this graph look like a line? Because this function now, when you had x squared minus four over x minus two, it simplifies to just x plus 2, right, which is y equals x plus 2. That's a line. 
right? So it looks like a line, except at 2, we have a hole. Do you guys remember talking about that in Algebra 2? Yeah, that's what it looks like. So as we move from the right and the left, as I'm getting closer and closer to 2, I'm getting closer and closer to the y value of 4. Okay, so that's what's going on in that problem. All right, so the next one, so it says, find the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x if we have this piecewise function. Okay, so I scared you by just saying the word piecewise function. I saw some of you guys like, wait, what? <laughs> so we could do this. So let's start with the first part, x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. This factors. So the bottom factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1, and those x minus 1s go away. So we really have the function x plus 1. Okay, so you just told me you knew what 1 over x looked like because we talked about mean girls, right? Okay, what does 1 over x plus 1 look like? Shifted where? To the left, because the x is replaced with x plus 1. Now, if you think about horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, what's the vertical asymptote in this problem? Negative 1, right? Does it make sense? Negative 1 is what makes it undefined. That's why it shifted over to the left. Looks like that. Yeah, because 1 over x has an asymptote of 0. Exactly. And the horizontal asymptote is still 0. So it looks like this graph except at 1. So it's saying it looks like x minus 1 over x squared minus 1, as long as x isn't equal to 1. But if x is equal to 1, it instead jumps up to 2. So we have the point 1 comma 2 up there. So that means we have to have a hole on this graph, right? Because at 1, it can't look like what it looks like. It can't be where it normally is. Otherwise, it's not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, right? So the question is, well, what's the limit? So imagine taking your right hand and your left hand and tracing along the curve and getting closer to 1. Am I going to the filled-in circle or am I going to the open circle? I'm going to that open circle, right? So I'm tracing along the curve, getting closer to 1. My limit is right there. I need to know what that is. So thoughts, how can I figure out what that point is? Yeah, RIM. Into the original, but if I plug in the original, so if I plug in 1, don't I get undefined? 0 over 0? Yeah, what do you think, Adam? Yeah, maybe, but yeah, I guess you could. So you could say, oh, I'm going to plug in x equals 1, but then going back to that original equation, you still get 0 over 0 with that. Yeah, Caitlin? Ah, we simplified that function, didn't we? So we simplify the function. So now we're able to plug in the 1 without getting undefined. So what point is this uh, open circle? Yeah, it's open at 1 comma 1 half. So what's our limit as x goes to 1 for g of x? It's 1 half, right? It's the y value that we get closer to as x gets closer and closer to 1. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, so we kind of mentioned left-hand, right-hand limits. In order for a limit to exist at a certain number, so let's say I'm talking about at x equals 7, the right-hand and left-hand limits need to both go to the same number in order for that limit to exist. So that's what it's saying here. So it says the limit as x as x goes, x goes to a of f of x equals l, if and only if the limit as x goes to a from the right of our function is equal to l, and the limit as x goes to a from the left of our function is equal to L. So I know you guys probably don't like notation. We're learning some different notations in calculus. So the right-hand limit and left-hand limit need to go to the same Y value. Then we're able to say that the limit exists at that certain X value. So this will make more sense as we do these examples. Yeah. You guys like my Mean Girl reference, don't you? That's like Alicia LaMagdalene's like favorite movie. We watched it for Community Day one year. We missed out. All right, so number one. So it says, for the function graph below, identify each limit or state that it does not exist. So the limit as x goes to 0, and that little negative means from the left, right? So as I'm going towards the line, whoops, <laughs> towards this vertical line, as I'm getting closer, closer to 0 from the left side, what y value do I get closer and closer to? 3. That is our answer there. So it's equal to 3. As I come from the right side, so as I'm plugging in 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, what y value do I get closer to? 1, you got it. 
So the limit as x goes to 0 in general? D and E, exactly. All right, so the limit as x goes to 5 from the left. So not negative 5, that's the big thing people will mess up on. 5 from the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's that point right there. 5 from the left would be 3. Do you guys all see why that's 3? All right, so negative 2, as I'm getting closer closer to negative 2, that's this point right here. What y value do I get closer and closer to? 3. 1 from the left. 2, uh-huh, because it's getting closer to this one. Oops, <laughs> 2. Uh, how about 1 from the right? Also 2. So even though it's not a filled in point, that's fine, right? Yeah. Yeah, E. So as I get closer and closer to negative 2, so negative 2 is right here, right? So we're coming from both the right and the left, and we're getting closer to the Y value of 3. So 1, 2, 3. Like the open versus the closed, it's whatever's like along the curve. So if I was so imagine using that t table that we were doing and plugging in numbers that are getting closer and closer to it. If I was going towards one from the right, I would plug in like two, one point five, one point one, one point is getting closer and closer to that one. Does that make sense? Oops. In your equation, yeah. If you had like some kind of function. All right, so the limit as x goes to 1 in general, so 1 in general would be 2. The limit as x goes to negative 3, what do we think there? 1, yep. So it says, what is f of 1 and how is it different than part h? So f of 1 is a filled in point. f of 1 is this point up here. What is that? 1, 6. Okay, that is a filled in point. The limit is the y value you get closer to along the curve. Let's say that. From both the right and the left. Okay, so a limit doesn't have to exist. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't say it that way. A limit doesn't have to have a filled in point with it. So it doesn't need to be filled in. Okay, so I want you guys to take some time and try number two. And if you finish number two, try number three. So try this one. Okay, so the first one, we have the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right. So what I always had to do is kind of think about this line. And I'm like, okay, if I trace along the curve and I'm getting closer to that line, I'm getting closer to this y value. So it should be 3, should be your answer. So 3. So as I approach negative 3 from the left, I'm actually going to go along this other curve. And that's going to get closer to what? Is that 6? Mm-hmm. The limit as x goes to negative 3 in general, then, does not exist. <coughs> 4 from the right, it looks like it's going right here, so to negative 4. Um, 4 from the left looks like it's also going to negative 4, so 4 in general would go to negative 4. Um, negative 6 from the right, so negative 6 is, I believe, right here. So from the right hand side, we would be getting closer and closer to this point, which is negative 3. Or not negative 3, 3. Negative 11, that was down here. So that was 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. x goes to infinity. What do we think as x gets really, really, really big? What happens to y? It goes to infinity, right? So it's going to be infinity. That is also d and e. So that's very frustrating for calculus students because they're like, wait, why is it does not exist? Because infinity doesn't exist. Like, what is infinity? Like, it's just this idea that we have, right? So sometimes the AP test on the multiple choice, sometimes it will say does not exist. 
sometimes it will be more specific and say infinity. So you have to know the difference between those. So um, yeah, same with negative infinity. So the next one is negative infinity because we're going to the um, down and that could also be D and E. Now I tend to pick the more specific example and I'll, I'll make sure on the test I say that like if it's infinity or negative infinity make sure you put infinity or negative infinity. So like things like 1 over x squared, do you guys know what y equals 1 over x squared looks like? Like this. If I talked about the limit as x went to 0, I would say infinity. They both go up to infinity, right? Does it make sense? Um, but you could all technically put does not exist for that as well. All right, so this one. So as I go towards negative 6 in general, doesn't that just go to, what's, what one is that? Oh, that one does not exist. <laughs> it was a negative 6, right? And then it says, if the limit as x goes to a certain a value of f of x equals 0, what are two possible solutions for a? So let's kind of use our math terminology and see if we know what it's saying. So a limit is a y value, right? So it's saying our y value is equal to 0. What x value does it get closer and closer to? So let's find the y values of 0 on our graph. Here and here. As I approach those numbers from the left and the right, I go towards 0. Does that make sense? What are those values for x? <coughs> Yeah, it's 0 and it's 8. So those are two possible possible values for A. Okay, feeling good with us. All right, super speedily. Let's try these. So I have negative 3 from the right. Negative 3 from the right looks like it goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 3 from the left goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh -huh, so negative 7. So negative 3 in general does not exist. 3. What value do I go to when I'm at 3? 5. Uh, 0, it looks like negative 4. 11 from the right. Where is 11? Oh. Is it 4? <laughs> negative 6? <six. laughs> I don't know. I can't see what they are. Oh, 11 from the right. What am I talking about? One. I thought I heard someone say four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine. I'm really blind, so the more you help me with these, it's really good. Especially like my little machine, it's kind of like, you should look at it sometimes, it does like a little wavy thing. Like it's never steady. <laughs> which makes things really fun on these. All right, so x goes to negative 6. So negative 6, where is negative 6? Right here. What number is that? Negative 4. And then negative infinity? Negative 4. It stays along that line. And then infinity? 9. That's it. Good job, guys. All right, so the next little bit says sketching graphs. So it says sketch a graph of an example of a function that satisfies all of the conditions. Okay, so there are an infinite number of graphs you could have here. Okay, I'm just going to look for the specific conditions that we have here. So it says the limit as x goes to 1 from the left-hand side goes to 2. So I'm going to draw an open circle there. And then I need to draw some kind of like indication that it's coming from the left. So I'm just going to draw like a little tail on it coming from the left. Now that tail could be really anywhere. You could have it down here, down here. Oh, well, not down there. That wouldn't be a function. Uh, like that. It doesn't matter what that tail looks like. Okay, so 1 from the right is negative 2. So again, do an open circle. We're going towards negative 2. And then 1 in general is 2. So which one am I going to fill in? The top circle or the bottom circle? The top circle. Okay, the only thing that you can't do here is some people get really crazy with their graphs and they decide they're going to have stuff over here too. Right? That's not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. So just make sure that you only have things on like the left side of the one and the right side of the one. We don't have things on both sides of those, right? Oh, I don't know how to say that. Uh, we don't have two functions like failing or two curves, which would fail the vertical line test. That's what I'm getting. All right, so the next one. Because this is saying that we have the point uh, one comma two is filled in. Does it make sense? All right, so the next one. So it says sketch a graph of a function that satisfies. So we have limit as x goes to 1 is 3. 
as we go to four. So one, one um, I said didn't say right or left, so we can do either direction, right? Or I mean both of those directions go towards one. Now it doesn't matter if you do like one of them's up, one of them's down. I don't care how you draw that. So four, one, two, three, four. Four also goes to three, so we need to pop back up in that direction. Four from the right goes to negative three, though. And then f of one is one, so we have a filled in point at one, one, and we have a filled in point at four, comma, negative one. So just kind of put some arrows on the end, and you're good to go. Does that make sense? So you can have lots of different things. All right, so determine the values of the following limits using tables and a graphing calculator. Okay, so let's use our graphing calculator now that Ari has his fix now. So we're going to go in here, and we can um, put in our y equals. Ah, of course, it's not working. Yeah. Um, there's ways to do it, like you can go through memory and clear it, but I just usually put new numbers on top of it. So parenthesis x minus 1 divided by parenthesis x squared parenthesis x plus 2. That speaker in that room is so obnoxious. All right, and then we're going to do second table. So if you need to adjust it so you can put in whatever values you want, you go to table set and do ask. I have to do this every single time on my calculator up here. Okay, and we're going from... Um, towards negative 2 from the right hand side. So let's think about where negative 2 is. So what numbers do I want to plug in? Negative 1, negative 1.5, negative 1.9. Does this make sense? Yeah, totally. Oops, negative 1.5. Oh, yeah. All right, so what's happening here? Do you see any pattern with your number? This is where I do the really obnoxious nine, 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 nine. Let's see what happens. These are huge numbers, aren't they? Look at that number. What's it going towards? Negative infinity, right? It's some kind of asymptote. That's what's happening. You can look at the graph. And if you look at that graph at negative 2, it goes down here. So as 2 goes from the right, what about 2 from the left? What would the, it go to? Infinity. It would be right here. Right, exactly. So let's do the next one. So um, I'm going to plug in. So I'm doing 2 from the left. So I want to plug in like 1, 1 1.5, 1.9, 1.99. So go ahead and change your y1. We go to our table. Oops. What's happening now? It's getting closer and closer to no. Point four. So you could do the really obnoxious one point and try to do as many as possible. And it actually rounds it to 0.4, right? I know it's not exactly 0.4. So there has to be a reason that this is 0.4. And that's what we're going to learn next time in class. We're not always going to use like graphs and um, tables. We're not going to use our calculator to find limits. Instead, we're going to learn methods. So I'm going to show you this method really quickly. What could I do? I could just factor. What if I factor the top and I factor the bottom? Do you guys see how those x minus 2s go away? That's what made it undefined. It was 0 over 0 because of those x minus 2s. Now are you able to plug in a 2? Sure, the top becomes 2, the bottom becomes 5. What is 2 fifths? 0.4. That's a little bit faster, isn't it? So it's a little bit faster to learn some of these tricks. All right, so we'll stop. We are going to do the squeeze theorem today, but remind me to do it next time. Yeah, it's my favorite theorem.